Stephen requests me on Patreon to review the cult favorite film, Pink Flamingos, directed by John Waters. This actually holds a few noble places in 70 cinema, so I've been curious about watching it for a while. It was a film that played a major role in the rise of the Midnight Movie, gave John Waters' directing career a big boost, and was one of the movies that helped put New Line Cinema on the map. It's also a very highly regarded film within the LGBTQ community. This is only the third Waters film I've seen following Hairspray and Polyester, both of which I liked. I was also aware of its reputation, so I had a general idea of what to expect from Pink Flamingos, and it was certainly interesting. I think the movie is at its best when it follows Divine around Baltimore. Waters employed a documentary-style filmmaking approach to the movie, and the extremely low budget fits with the premise, which involves two families dueling to be labeled the filthiest person alive. As strange and offbeat as Divine's family is in the movie, I like that they are genuinely supportive of one another, and there is an affection that comes through. We also see a community supportive of them as they partake in some outrageous activities. This is in contrast to the villains, the Marble family, who are just horrible to people, including kidnapping girls and impregnating them. Divine plays basically a Bugs Bunny type character, who only harms others when provoked. With Pink Flamingos, Waters wouldn't have the audience embrace characters who do not fit within the expected norms of the time, which I've noticed is a common theme in his work. I also like the home movie quality of the film. There's something about the look of low-budget 1970s films like this one that really stand out to me. Of course, anyone who has heard of Pink Flamingos will know of its most infamous scene, where, get your vomit bag out for this one, Divine eats dog feces. And after finally watching the film, I have to say I'm surprised that's the moment that most impacted people. I mean, it is unquestionably disgusting, as was John Waters' intent. But it happens at the very end of the movie, and the preceding 90 minutes are not exactly family-friendly entertainment. There's a scene with a chicken I found far, far more shocking and outrageous. Waters intended Pink Flamingos to be the film equivalent of those sideshow carnivals. The idea was the audience would watch it and be shocked by what he was showing on screen. He actually considered it a badge of honor if viewers walked out in disgust, and some screenings even passed out vomit bags. And you also have to consider the historical context, as Pink Flamingos was released only four years after the MPA discarded the Motion Picture Production Code and replaced it with a rating system, giving American films more freedom of what to show. So this was not the kind of material people were accustomed to seeing in movies. Even with recognizing all that and the historical significance of the film's content, I actually found the shock value scenes to be the least interesting parts. I know all of this was very radical, especially considering the film was released in 1972. Part of the reason for the movie's box office success was due to word of mouth spreading by the kinds of acts seen in Pink Flamingos. Waters was testing how much the audience would look away. However, he also lingers on those scenes too long. For example, there's an incestuous scene between two characters at one point, and when it started, I thought, oh wow, he's taking this in a bold direction. But it just keeps going and going, and at a certain point I'm just thinking, okay, we get it, John. Next scene. Even the chicken scene I mentioned earlier just appears like it will never end. Ditto a scene where someone does an unusual dance with their derriere. I also have to admit, I found the acting to be something to be desired. I'm not expecting Olivier from an ultra-low-budget film starring primarily amateur actors. But when Divine is acting circles around everyone, it really highlights how stilted the other performers are. Although I will say I find it really sweet that John Waters continued to use the same group of actors in many of his movies, even when New Line gave him larger budgets and he started working with big Hollywood names. Surprisingly, there are long stretches when Divine is not on screen, as Pink Flamingos focuses on the rest of the family or the villains. Divine does eventually get a lot more screen time in the third act, though, including that scene. While I admire Pink Flamingos more than I outright like it, the movie is definitely an example of John Waters' uniqueness as a filmmaker and his willingness to go anywhere. Thank you for the request, Stephen.